Hi, welcome to Bible on the Beach. I'm Ryan. Today we'll be in Acts chapter 21, verses 26 through 40. Now my hope and prayer every time we gather for Bible on the Beach is so that disciples can make disciples and churches can plant churches. That's been our heart and our intent at Ocean Water from the beginning because I believe that if you just have a couple people and you have the Bible and you have some friends and some food and the Holy Spirit, that God will move. And this simple approach um, has led us now to have 22 churches in five countries that have produced 6,602 liters of water uh, to help the marginalized. And so I hope that you're encouraged. It's a great day to be alive. I hope that you'll get something out of today's message. Now, today, we've been following the journey of Paul, uh, the apostle, in the book of Acts as he's gone on his missionary journey. Uh, it was typical. Paul's methodology was that he would be led by the Spirit into a new area. He would spend some time there establishing uh, a new church. They don't look like the churches of today. They didn't have staff, and they didn't have buildings, and they didn't have real estate. They were, these were little pockets of believers that gathered together to uh, sing songs, to study scripture, to pray for one another, to uh, reach out into the community. And the power of the Holy Spirit was working very powerfully at this time. And God was using Paul to establish many different works in many different churches. And today we pick it up in Acts chapter 21, verse 26. It says, Paul took the four men to the temple and ceremonially purified himself along with them. He publicly gave notice of the date when their vows would end and when sacrifices would be offered for each of them. <clears throat> now, last time in Bible on the Beach, we talked about uh, the difference between following the Holy Spirit and then the culture that you prefer and that you like. And so they were figuring this out because the early church is very messy. They were uh, bringing together uh, two different cultures, two different languages, uh, two different ways of being educated, different races. All of this stuff creates conflict. And when you have conflict, you need clarity. And so what they said was that you need to put your culture aside and you need to keep Christ at the center. When you do that, you're on the path to success, just like we are in our life today. It's a good word for us to keep our cultural preferences aside, to keep Christ at the center, and then we'll know that we're on the pathway to success. So Paul's helping them understand this, <clears throat> helping them understand the differences between their culture and the cross that they're supposed to bear as they follow Jesus Christ. And there is a difference between the culture that we like and the cross that we're supposed to bear for Jesus. Now, verse 27 says, when the seven day period was almost over, a number of Jews from Western Turkey who had seen him in the temple courts stirred up the whole crowd against them. Now, you'll find this happening whenever people in religious power feel that their influence is being threatened, they oppose you uh, and this is nothing new. This is happens. This, uh, this happened in the life of Jesus. Now this is happening in the life of Paul. You see, whenever whenever people feel threatened when they're losing their power, uh, and their and the political winds have now switched against them, they don't like that because uh, human beings love to accumulate power. They hate giving it away. It's just part of our broken, sinful, fallen nature. And so Paul's dealing with this. We can learn some lessons. <clears throat> with how he deals with this. He says here, they shouted, men of Israel, help us. This is the man who teaches everywhere what is contrary to our nation, see our way, our law, and this temple. And not only that, but now he brings these non-Jewish men with him into the inner court. So Paul was, <laughs> Paul was undermining their authority uh, and then more importantly, he was undermining their culture. We really don't like this. <laughs> we like our culture. Uh, we like people to do things the way that we do them. Uh, and Paul's undermining them uh, just about at every turn, not just theologically, uh, but also culturally, also racially. Um, and so <clears throat> Paul shows us how to navigate this here. He says... <clears throat> Uh, verse 30, this ignited a huge riot 
in the city as all the people came together to seize Paul and drag him out of the temple courts, closing the gates behind him. But as they were about to kill Paul, the news reached the commander of the Roman garrison that the entire city was in an uproar. He immediately ran out to the crowd with a large number of his officers and soldiers. When the crowd saw them coming, they stopped beating Paul. The commander arrested him and ordered him to be bound with chains. He then asked, who is he and what has he done wrong? Some in the crowd shouted one thing and another person another, just adding to the confusion. Since the commander was unable to get to the truth because of the disturbance, he ordered that Paul be brought back to their headquarters. Now, when they reached the steps leading up to the fortress, they had to protect Paul and carry him because of the violent mob following them. And everyone was screaming out, away with this man, kill him. You see, a lot of times we wonder why we get persecuted or why bad things happen or why difficult things happen. And we fail to understand that God always has a greater purpose and a greater reason for why things are happening. And we have to trust that God is working through the situation. Now, God was allowing Paul to be persecuted because God wanted to bring him into the presence of another group of people that he could share the gospel with. You see, a lot of times we get opposition in our life because God's trying to close one door, he's trying to open another, in the hopes that we won't knock on that door anymore, we'll go through this new door that he's opened. And so, so in some ways, opposition can often be a gift, as it is here with Paul. Now, verse 37, as Paul was being led to the entrance of the compound, he said to the commander in Greek, may I have a word with you? The commander replied, so you know Greek, do you? Aren't you that Egyptian fanatic who started a rebellion some time ago and led 4,000 assassins out into the wilderness? Paul said, I am, in fact, a Jew from Tarsus in Cilicia, a well-known city of southern Turkey where I was born. I beg you, sir, please give me a moment to speak to these people. Now, when the commander gave his permission, Paul stood on the steps and gestured with his hands for the people to listen. When the crowd quieted down, Paul addressed them um, in Aramaic. So, what we want to learn from today is that when we receive opposition and circumstances don't go the way that we want them to, God has a bigger plan. He had a bigger plan for Jesus. He had a bigger plan for Paul, and he has a bigger plan for you and I. So my encouragement to you today is don't allow your circumstances to dictate the belief that God has called you to the space and the place that you're in in this moment, because he's going to work in you and through you, even if you don't feel like it. So thanks so much for joining Bible on the Beach today. We've been working our way a little bit through the Bible, each at a time, through uh, these little segments. Uh, I hope they encourage you. I hope you learn uh, some of the context, some of the culture of the Bible. More importantly, that God will drop something into your heart today that you can take with you today as you go. Let me pray for you. God, thank you for today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for helping us to see something from it. Thank you for helping us to hear something from it. Thank you for letting us to feel something from it. Be with me today as I go now. Thank you for your word to me. In Jesus' name, amen.